Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We are gathered here today in the name of the eternal God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, for another prayer service. I just pray that this service ministers to you all. I just pray that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will continue to guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. We are going to get started with our opening hymn, which is our theme today, Oh, to be like thee. I'm going to share the link in the comment section for those who don't have a hymnal. And we are going to get right into ooh, something underneath my chair. Oh, oh, not my good shirt. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get right into it momentarily. I'm just looking for a head cover, which I should have definitely pulled out before we got started, but let me see here. That's the hymn that we're going to be singing this afternoon, Oh, to be like thee. I apologize for the delay. This will definitely do. I apologize for the delay, but we are going to get right into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures, Jesus thy perfect likeness to wear said oh to be like thee oh to be like thee blessed redeemer pure as thou art come in thy sweetness Come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender and kind. Helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering sinner to find. Said, oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer. Pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee. While I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple, meet for thy dwelling. I'll make fit me for life and heaven above said oh to be like thee oh to be like thee blessed redeemer pure as thou art come in thy sweetness Come in thy fullness, seeking the wandering sinner to find. Said, oh, to be like thee, 
Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image. Deep on my heart. Let us get into our opening prayer. And then we are going to be reading from Romans 11 and 12. We're going to be reading from the end of Romans 11 to the beginning of Romans 12. Or actually, we're going to read from the end of Romans 11 to the entirety of Romans 12. So let us pray. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior is he. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of mercy I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. God, you are the source of our strength. You are the very strength of our lives. And Lord, we give ourselves away to you so that you may use us. Lord, we dedicate our lives to you so that you may be with us and guide us and protect us through all things. Songwriter said, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God. God, I don't know what I would be or where I would be or whom I would be without you, but I thank you, Lord, that I don't have to worry about that. I thank you, Father God, that many things about tomorrow I may not understand, but I know who holds my tomorrow. I know who holds my today, and I know who holds my hand forever and ever. Thou my everlasting portion, more than strength and life to me. All along life's pilgrim's journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Close to thee, Father God, close to thee. God, I pray right now as we get into this prayer service, that the very words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be deemed acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are my strength and you are my redeemer. O to be like thee, Father God, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, Lord, into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds, transform us, create in us clean hearts and renew right standing spirits within us. God, I pray that you will transform us through the renewing of our minds and continue to allow us to hold on to your unchanging hand. Lead on, O King Eternal, in every aspect of our lives as we send up this prayer to you through Yeshua, our soon coming Lord, Savior, and intercessor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. So we're going to get right into our reading today, which is taken from Romans 11, the last portion, and Romans 12, the entirety. Let us let us begin reading from Romans 11, verse 28, and then go through Romans 12. And I'm reading from the New King James Version, which if you all have been following the ministry for the past, wow, it's 
about to be 19 and 20, 20, 21, 21, 22. It's about to be three years. Mm. Incredible. I've been following the ministry for the past three years. Come this fall, it is my favorite version of the Bible. So let us begin. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient, that through the mercy shown you they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, chapter 12, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who serves mercy, who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, evil cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21 and last. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Herein lies the word of God. Thanks be unto God. I want us to take this time to pray over all the things that God would have us to be. I want us to pray that we will be kind and affectionate towards those that maliciously use us and hate us without cause, and that we will be transformed through the renewing of our minds. God literally gave me this word as usual when I was coming in from the gym and I wanted to come on at 12.20. And I made a video on my WhatsApp that that would be the time that I'd be coming on. And so as I literally 
when I was leaving the gym, I get on the 95 North because my gym is more south from where I am. And I literally run right into the traffic jam of all traffic jams. And I say to myself, Lord, if I had known this, I would have literally um, avoided the situation. And so I'm driving and I realize I'm going to take the next exit. And I'm going to head east because I'm on the east side. I'm going to head east and then I'm going to cut up because it's going to be quicker for me to cut up through um, different roads than it is to cut up on the interstate. And so as I'm going and as I'm getting ready to exit, I had recorded the video about the time I would be coming online. And of course, I was waiting to hear the word from God in regards to what it is he wanted me to speak about. There's a couple things that came to mind. But more specifically, as I was literally pulling in, the hymn, Oh, to be likely, just flooded my spirit. I was like, God, isn't that the desire of every person that follows you? I know that seems so standard, right? I know that seems so textbook, but is that truly not the desire of our hearts? Because if we think about it, just literally, logically, the desire of our heart is to be like God because we are created in his own image. Because we are demigods, because we are literally just a little lower than the angels, as the word declares. It is every portion of our being, once we align ourselves with our creator, to be like our creator. When you have a good relationship with your parents and your job, or your desire, rather, would be to be like your mother if you have a good relationship with your mother. Your desire would be to be like your father if you have a good relationship with your father. And that's every parent's wish or goal. They want you to be yourself, but they want you to find so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because, wow, they want you to find so much good in them that at some point in time, your ambition, your goal is to align with how they operate. Your mom wants you to look at her as a woman and say, that's the kind of woman I want to be. Your father wants you to look at him as a man and say, that's the kind of man I want to be, right? And even if we exchange sexes, your father as his daughter, he wants you to have some of his strength and some of his leadership capabilities. Your mother, looking at you as a son, wants you to be able to cook wants you to be able to take care of your household, wants you to be able to have emotional intelligence, right? They would like that the genes that they place within you and the blueprint which they created through you would be adhered to and followed in some way, shape, or form. There's going to be variations, of course, because that's what happens with genes. They mutate, right? Um, not always for the negative, but predominantly for the positive, right? And in that way, you want, if anything, if it's not going to be 100% or similar, you want it to be better, right? And so we can't be better than God in this example. We can't be better than Jesus. But the word declares that Jesus is the first, first, first fruit of many fruits to come. He is the vine, we are the branches, and God is the husbandman in this vineyard, right? So when we think about that, as I'm literally going up, Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about a recording that I had on my phone from a friend of mine that I've known for years, years. I've probably known her from the time I was 25, 26. I'll be 30 this year. I've known her for a long time. I've known her from the time she was in her early 20s and she's in her mid-20s now, right? And I've been meaning to link up with her, like, just for a sabbatical period, like a couple of months. And I reached out to her about the sabbatical period. And this is her bread and butter. This is how she works. And so her sabbatical period is going to be a couple thousand dollars. But it's my gift to myself for my upcoming birthday, turning 30. It's a major milestone. want to make sure you're as 
healthy as you possibly could be because she's in the health industry. And so I committed not knowing basically how the situation was going to happen, especially with what's going on with my housing situation right now. If anyone knows anything about South Florida, Miami is the most expensive city in the United States. And there's a definite correlation between Miami being so expensive and the state of Florida having the most uh, transplants out of all states in the past two years, right? Definitely a correlation. But outside of that, what has actually been going on is I'm just believing God because it's easy to believe him when your finances are visible in regards to what it is that you do. But when he asks you, and it's funny because the spirit told me about three minutes ago to be transparent, which is exactly what I'm doing before we pray. Um, when he asks you to switch from one career that you've been in for years to another, when he asks you to re-enroll in school and you don't know where the first dollar is coming from, when he asks you to go to a tax agency from someone that you believe is too big for you right now, but would be the equivalent of your parents buying shoes for you that you don't currently fit, but you will grow into and past hallelujah and past growing into those shoes. You're going to actually grow past those shoes. So they may be too big right now, but you're stepping out of faith because the Lord is showing you that at some point in time, you're going to be too big for those shoes. And those very same shoes are actually going to lead you to your next bear. All right. So this is just a bunch of stepping out of faith things the Lord is asking you to do right now. Um, stepping out of faith in regards to the sabbatical because it won't just be for me. It'll be for her in a transformative period for her because of my relationship with God. Speaking to her and listening to the note today, right before I came in, I was a little apprehensive. I didn't want my spirit to be marred going into this prayer period. But she said, God so clearly and she connotated it with healing. And it was so beautiful to hear because, man. In the words of Jesus Christ himself, flesh and blood did not disclose this to you. The way and how you literally just said something with such passion and zeal. And she actually recorded that recording on the Sabbath, right? Is because the spirit of the Lord is beginning to move upon your life. The word declares, and this is probably one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. It's not my favorite, but it's one of my favorites. Isaiah 60, 22, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I've known her for years and everything is just aligning now for certain things to happen, right? So I thank God that it doesn't look feasible and it doesn't look possible, but he has given me very clear instructions on how to deal with a litany of things I'm going to be going through. And this week is just going to, I'm really glad I'm starting it out with prayer, especially Oh to be likely. And the word declares, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? Obedience being better than sacrifice and heeding the voice of God better than the blood of a thousand rams. When he tells you to do something, not only is he telling you to do it because you're capable of doing it. I've said this numerous times, but he's telling you to do it because he's going to create a way for you to do it. I'm listening to a sermon today by Pastor Travis Green, and it's called For the Dropouts. It's his most recent sermon. And he's speaking about David avenging Abigail and I forget the name of his other wife. David avenging his two wives and the city of Ziglag and all of these different things and so many points he drew out which were just extraordinary I'm not even done with the sermon one of the points I really like the most and I mean I I really like this point the most because God spoke to me through it he said Ziglag is the place where you're comfortable and it's the place where you're basically governor but God has called you to be king or he's called you to be queen you can be comfortable being governor, but that's not your calling. David was called to be the king of Israel, and he was the governor of Ziklag, which was given to him. And even though he was comfortable, and even though he was upset that Ziklag was destroyed, as Pastor Travis said, there's a reason why it had to be destroyed. And the reason why it had to be destroyed is because in the midst of that comfort, the very next day, King Saul was going to be killed. Because while David is over here mourning for his city and getting ready to war for it and seeking the Lord like a real man of God, Saul is petitioning a witch, right? I'm adding this portion because Pastor Travis didn't mention this portion. Saul is petitioning a witch to pull up the spirit of Samuel, right? So, man, 
man, things really are not always what they appear. You would think this man was just strong and mighty in the Lord because he was king of Israel, but he was committing treason against the spirit of God. And while he was being treasonous, David was being a soldier in the army of God dedicated to a fault in the midst of his sadness, in the midst of his disappointment. He inquired of the Lord and said, God, should I go up? The Lord said, go up and you'll be successful. In the midst of that, Pastor Travis mentioned that he had lost some persons. And even at that point, most persons would re-inquire of God. But David did not need to re-inquire of God because he heard, hallelujah, he heard what God said. Praise the Lord. When you hear the voice of God, when God has given you a vision, Pastor Travis spoke about pregnancy too. And I had a very clear vision a couple of years ago at this point, 2022, 2021. 2020 might have been 2020 probably either 2020 or the top of 2021 i think it was the top of 2021 it would have been before i went to jamaica so yeah that would have been 2020 i can't believe it's been that long wow it would have been around the spring late spring early summer 2020 so i received this vision two years ago right though the vision terry it will not delay thank you holy spirit right it will surely come to pass. Mm, mm, mm. For the Lord is not slow. Hallelujah. According to his promises, as some count slowness and slackness, but he is mm, being patient towards you. Hallelujah. In mercy, his patience is his kindness. His delay is his consideration. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. So in the midst of this period, Pastor Travis mentioned something about pregnancy. So I definitely beseech y'all, right, to watch the sermon. It's on Ford City. And I had this vision a couple of years ago about being pregnant. And I was looking at my husband, even though I couldn't like see his features. He was tall, dark, handsome, of course, because the Lord gives great gifts, understand. And I'm looking up at him and I'm saying, trust me, I don't know whose baby this is. I didn't step out on you. Da, da, da. He's like, I totally understand. We're going to figure out whose baby this is together. Right. And it's so funny because the Lord is showing me because he's told me past that point that me and my husband would be in ministry together. <laughs> I am blown right now <laughs> because I'm getting a revelation on I'm getting a revelation on a vision I had two years ago, just talking to y'all about it. Man, obeying God is always, always the best idea because I would literally have never gotten this revelation if I didn't stick to what the Lord just told me about being transparent. The Lord has shown me that me and my husband, specifically to both of us, are going to have an international ministry. And when you think about pregnancy, it requires the egg and it requires the sperm. And so it requires the male excuse me, the female and the male. And so because of that, to even be pregnant, to be birthing a ministry, I would have to have that component. And so the Lord is showing me, even though I'm doing the work, he's doing the work. Because even though I have the egg right now through true ministries, he has the sperm through whatever it is that he's doing for the Lord, right? And I believe this so strongly because I've always felt like the Lord is going to connect me with an Isaiah type, right? I've always felt that. I've always felt when I believe it's Isaiah 6 or 8, when it speaks about him going into the prophetess, I always felt as if I was the prophetess, right? And so taking all that into consideration as we get ready to wrap up in prayer, I was literally with my kingdom partner, pregnant with the ministry, and I hadn't given birth in the vision, but in the past two years, many ministers have ministered to me saying that when it is time for that to actually happen, you will have the vision of giving birth. And I remember asking God, I was like, why haven't I had the vision of giving birth yet? And literally just getting this download about the man that was in the vision with me. Mind expanded. So it's like, wow. Okay. It allows me to be more patient because I've seen what I've seen and I know what I've heard, right? Just like David and Ziglag, just like us knowing that to be like God requires us to just stick to the plan, be obedient, right? The last power of prayer session was entitled Dedicated to Discipline, being 
dedicated to keeping the word of God when it's difficult, when it's easy and everything in between. Right. So we're going to pray that we are like the Lord. We're going to sing one more verse of Oh, to be like thee. Now we're going to pray that we're transformed through the renewing of our minds. We're going to pray that the Lord will send our kingdom partners, Maranatha, Yeshua. Come quickly, Lord, with what it is that you've given us. Let the time align with exactly what it is that you've set forth for us. Let the vision not tarry or delay. Let it accomplish what it's set out to do. And furthermore, Father, may we be able to do everything it is that you've called us to do from the beginning of time. May we be like you in the image of you. For your sheep know your voice, and a stranger they will not listen to God. Praise the Lord. Oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming now to receive the anointing divine. All that I am and have I am Lord, from this moment, all shall be thine. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thy own image deep on my heart. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness. Step thine own image deep on my heart. Father, King, Messiah, Lord, Savior, Master of the universe, source of our strength, strength of our lives. God, I come humbly yet boldly to the throne of grace, knowing that I have access to the blood that was shed for the remission of my sins. God, if there is anyone underneath the sound of my voice who does not have access, Lord, I pray that you will avail yourself unto them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father except through you, Jesus. God, be an open door. Be the way that they need that leads to life eternal. For though it be difficult to find, may you find them because they seek. May you answer them because they've asked. And Father God, may you open up unto them because they've knocked on the door of salvation. God, I pray right now that your word will be cemented in our hearts. Romans 11, 28 through the entirety of Romans 12. God, may we know that we must turn the other cheek, that we must be kind unto our enemies, heaping up coals of fire upon their head. May we love Father God without prejudice, without hypocrisy. Father, may we be committed to each other. May we all understand the importance of our gifts in the body. 
If it is to prophesy, may we prophesy. If it is to teach, may we teach. If it is to preach, may we preach. If it is to lead, may we be excellent leaders, Father God. For those who do not have gifts, move them out the way that are operating in spaces that they are just door holders, placeholders for, Father God. Lord, I pray that those who do have the gifting will be led through the Holy Spirit, through the discernment that the Spirit gives to utilize the gifting in the way you've given them to utilize it. Lord, there's so many times we use the gifts of God, which are not to be returned, for they're given, Father God, without any recompense. They're given, Father God, without being any kind of Indian giver situation. They're given to us freely, Lord. But how we utilize them is based on our free will. So may our free will align with the desire you have for our lives. And may the free will that you've given us, Father God, fall in line, in tandem with what it is that you have for us as your people. If we are to preach in certain places, send us to the Macedonians. If we are to teach in certain places, Father God, show us to the Philippians. God, may we be the people, Lord, that you've called us to be by any means necessary. And God, I pray right now that you will cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Remove all wickedness. Remove all darkness. Remove, Father God, all wiles of the enemy. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force, God. But we lift up a holy standard against it. For when the enemy tries to come in as a raging flood, that is what you do on our behalf, God. God, transform us. Renew us. May we be transformed, Father God, through the renewing of our minds. May you create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew right-standing spirits within us. May we be like you, God. Oh, to be like thee, Father, blessed Redeemer. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy fullness, Father God, so that we will continue to have joy unspeakable that is full of glory because the joy you give us, Father God, is unlike any other joy that the world could give. God, I dedicate myself to you. I give myself away so you may use me in every aspect of my life with every breath that I take, each moment I make, Father God, until eternity ends, Father God, and starts all over again. Even then, Father God, I will praise you. Praise and worship is a lifestyle, Lord. It's not a moment. It's not a song. It's not a place. It is our very existence. You are the source of our strength. You are the strength of our lives. God, may we be transformed completely. Remove everything that is not like you, Father God, from us. Allow us in every situation, Lord, to take the lower seat so that the master of the household will walk over to us in said seat and say, what are you doing in such a lowly position? Come up. Versus us, Father, being placing ourselves in higher positions and being told to come down. Songwriter said, if I'm too high, Lord, bring me down. If there is something in our lives, Lord, we want you to move it out of our way. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Father God, let us be created in your image, shaped in your likeness transformed to have the very mind of Jesus be within us, to have hearts that are not of stone, but are hearts of flesh, that are concerned about your people in the same way you are concerned about your people. He you said, Peter, do you love me three times? And on the last time you said, if you love me, feed my sheep. May we feed your people with the word. May we have lives that are living sacrifices, Father God, holy and acceptable unto you, O Lord, which is our reasonable service. And may, Father God, our light so shine so that all men may see the glory of the Father that lives and resides within us, through us. We are the light of the world, God, cities that are set upon hills that cannot be hid. We are the salt of the earth. 
salt that has lost its savor is useless only to be thrown on the ground and trampled under the feet of men. Regenerate our flavor. Regenerate our zeal. Regenerate our light. Change the bulb. Freshen the salt so that we may do everything it is that you've called us to and be it done unto all the glory and all the honor and all the worthiness of the one that has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous everlasting light. Forgive us of all of our sins, known and unknown, Father God. And Lord, may we continue to walk in the beauty of holiness. For the word declares that holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Anything I fail to ask, Holy Spirit, as we close in prayer, keep us throughout the remainder of our days, protect us from the wickedness, from the gunmen, from the knife men, from thieves, Father God, from financial woes, Lord, from distress, from sin nature, Father God, guard our lips, may we not curse, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, so transform our hearts so that only clean, pure rivers of water can flow from within us and through us. God, we believe, help all of our areas of unbelief. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will continue to make moanings and groanings and utterings on our behalf that cannot be understood. And Yeshua, I pray that you will continue to intercede on our behalf to the Father, taking this prayer we've placed on the altar of sacrifice, cleaning it up and presenting it as holy and acceptable unto your God, and unto our Father, and unto our God. Anything I fail to ask, Lord, I pray that you will fail not to grant it. Continue to keep us throughout the remainder of this day, God, as we give it all to you that you are worthy of, which is everything. Through Yeshua, I pray, I send up this vote of thanks to you, O God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that you all were richly blessed today. If you were blessed, be a blessing as well. Be sure to share the stream. I'm going to close this out with a benediction now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. See you all tomorrow. God's prayer life for Bible study.